Good morning. Good morning. It's like a beautiful summer, or not summer, sunny, not summer, definitely not summer day. Very wintry, cold day, but beautiful outside, beautiful inside. Um, welcome to church this morning, everybody. Welcome to those who I can see and can see me, and welcome to those who are online that I cannot see but can see me. And welcome to those of you who may be joining later in the week or some other time. I'm from wherever you are joining from. I know people join from all sort of distances now, and I'll check in there in just a minute. Okay, quick run-through announcements because I don't want to go too long on the announcements here. Um, had a couple of good nights here these last couple of days, a couple of good days, fun stuff around the church here. Um, we went, uh, our confirmation young people went to um, Beth Samuel Synagogue over in Ambridge, and that was, a fun, that was a fun time, right? They were super welcoming. It was a really good experience to go to a different uh, faith place, and was it good? Yeah, yeah. Was it good? All right. I thought it was good. Don't talk to the kids, maybe. Um, yesterday was our Advent of Advent party at the Sour Wine uh, residence, and I really appreciate everybody who came and made that day what it was. It was very enjoyable for me and for our family. It was a classic day in our family where we tried to do something, but some of us were going to soccer games and going all over, all over God's creation here. Um, but I just really appreciate everybody who, come, who came. It was a really uh, enjoyable afternoon. Um, looking ahead to the week that's coming to, forward for us, a couple of youth things this upcoming weekend on Friday, right here at 7 o'clock, we're going to do our family movie night. And the movie is the Christmas classic, Home Alone. <laughs> right? So we're going to dive in with Kevin and the whole Home Alone crew and watch Home Alone sun, uh, Friday night, 7 o'clock. Everyone's welcome right here in the sanctuary. We'll have snacks and drinks and that sort of fun stuff. Um, then the next day, again, here in the sanctuary at 10 o'clock in the morning, we'll be doing church play day, um, and Pastor Jocelyn will be leading that. In fact, I don't even know what exactly the topic is going to be for Sunday, Saturday morning, but she'll be leading that, and it'll be a lot of fun um, for our youngest. It's really perfect for like kids at 10 and under. Um, so those things are coming up, um, and here's the big one that's coming up in the next few weeks, our Choral Eucharist. We've been talking about this for a number, uh, for a couple months now, and Choral Eucharist is coming up the next two weeks at Rehoboth and House of Prayer. Ben, do you want to say the details? Do you want me to say details and you give any extra things about it? Um, <laughs> there's a picture of the keyboard, but I'll talk. I'm going to keep talking. Um, next Sunday, Choral Eucharist will be at Rehoboth Lutheran Church at 1045 so we'll have worship at 9 o'clock at Van Kirk, and then all of the pastors and the choir that's been preparing for, from all the churches will be at Rehoboth, and we'll do this full mass worship thing with congregational singing and the choir singing and special readings and communion, and it's really a fantastic thing. So that's next Sunday at 1045 at Rehoboth, but then the following week we'll be here at House of Prayer doing the same thing at 1045. Um, and so you may be wondering, well, if all the pastors are at Rehoboth next Sunday, did we just not come? The cat's away, so the mice will... No, that's not, that's not. There will be church here, and the assistant of the bishop will be here leading worship with you all next Sunday. Uh, Pastor Melissa Stoller will be here to lead worship. She actually volunteered to come both Sundays in the parish, and so she'll be here next Sunday, and then at Rehoboth the following Sunday when Choral Eucharist is here at House of Prayer. So um, worry not, even though like your typical pastors will all be at Rehoboth next week, you have a special treat with the assistant to the bishop who will be here leading worship on that Sunday. Um, Ben, do, do, you know, do you have a musician? Who will be the musician for that Sunday? Sure. So hello, everyone. As uh, Pastor Mike said, we have two Sundays, um, once over at Rehoboth and then once over here at House of Prayer. I highly recommend going to both of them if you can. This is something that I don't think we've seen here at House of Prayer or around the four um, churches, uh, and something new, something fresh. Um, lots of, you'll hear little bits of, um, Heather Gantz over at Rehoboth will be organist for some of the pieces involved, so you'll hear her play, and uh, my friend and fellow musician who was here, I think for our church, Bring Back the Church rally, that's what it was, he, he'll be here playing some flute, some clarinet, some saxophone for the uh, afternoon or the morning. Um, yeah, everybody's been working really hard, and we're really excited to bring this to you. And like 20 to 30 people in the choir, right? Yes. Yeah, it's yes. been a huge turnout. It's just going to be really fun. So, yeah, next two weeks. All right, just a shout-out to all of our online people. Amy McBride, good morning to you. Brian Cole, 
Um, Diane Cannon, good morning to you all. Um, and prayers, you can throw prayer requests on here. Caitlin, good morning to you and the family. Awesome to have you guys online this morning, live with us. Angela George, good morning to you. Um, Jean Marie, good morning. And just good morning to anyone else who's online with us. I do uh, watch your comments and reply to them. Grateful to have you on that way. And everyone can text me or write prayer requests in there. Um, we're going to do the prayers a little bit differently, but they will be acknowledged um, before we do the, the prayer thing that we're doing throughout Advent here. Okay, that's enough talking. Let's get down to business. And the business is worshiping God. to rise as you are able and face the rear of the sanctuary. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin trusting in the tender mercy of God. God, for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. 
Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated.
All right, boys and girls, we're going to do the kid's story now. And if anybody wants to come forward, you can. You don't have to. Um, I'm going to sit right here in the steps. I like to move, mess around with Joe a little bit, move around, like moving to the back of the church where you didn't expect earlier. Um, and we're going to read from the Spark Story Bible, this Bible right here. And we're going to read on what page today? 396, the secret just for the kids. The story is the Pharisee and the tax collector. And it looks like this. Pharisees and tax collectors, they're usually not the good guys in the story, are they? What do you think? Will they be the good guys here? Probably not. We'll have to see. Here, I'm going to read on this side. All right, let's read our story. The Pharisee and the tax collector. Jesus walked and talked with some friends. He leaned against a shade tree on the roadside and began to tell a story, and a crowd gathered around to listen. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, a leader who was known as a good man. Everyone thought he always did what was right. The other man, a tax collector, cheated and stole money. The loud prayer of the Pharisee echoed in the temple. Phew, I am glad I am not like that tax collector He's not nice. I am great. Amen. <laughs> the tax collector prayed quietly. I'm sorry for what I do, Lord, he whispered, and I need you to help me do what is right. Amen. The picture here looks funny. Who do you think this guy's right here? The guy that's standing up in the room. That's the Pharisee guy right there. I think the tax collector is the guy bent down really low over there. See that? Yeah. And the Pharisees, they're like pastors of the church. They're like the pastor is the one that thinks he's really great. Jesus scratched his beard. He was thinking. Everyone thought that the Pharisee was a great man, especially the Pharisee himself, Jesus said. But he did not, he did not think he needed help from God. He thought he was great on his own. Ooh, said the crowd. And the tax collector knew he needed God. And he asked for God's help, Jesus said. So when you pray, follow the example of the tax collector, who was quiet and humble when he talked to God. Ah, said the crowd. Jesus explained the lesson in this story, in his story. Prayer is not a time to brag or to be proud. God sees past what people think and say about you. God knows what is in your heart. So prayer is a time to talk with God and ask for help. Jesus pushed off the tree and stepped into the road. What would Jesus say next? The crowd wondered. And then Jesus was full of stories about God. And the picture here just looked Jesus sort of teaching the crowds about what prayer is all about there. And they look pretty, pretty interested, right? And the question here, or the comment at the end, it's always here, it says, whisper a prayer in the morning, afternoon, and night, asking God to give you the daily help you need, which is actually, that's a great thing to do. Um, and so, what's our church called? House of Prayer, right? So, like, we should know a little bit about praying. Like, if I asked anyone in the church to come up right now to the front, they should be able to pray, right? Should we try that? Let's have, no, I'm not, we're not going to do that. <laughs> Everyone immediately like started freaking out, like getting really low in their pew. Like, don't call on me, I'm not here. Um, but praying, so I, first of all, I just think we make praying out to be this super hard thing. Like this, oh my goodness, I have to say the right things, where it's like a really hard thing to do. But in the story, like I, what, what I thought was amazing is Jesus reminds us that praying is just talking to God. And preferably when we talk to God, we're not really like arrogant or like it's not all about us, right? Like, dear God, I just wanna thank you for my greatness today. I know I'm probably the greatest pastor ever. Um, my sermons are always flawless theologically in presentation. Like, that would be the worst praying ever, right? No. And, like, God doesn't want, to, like, God doesn't want to hear you to, like, pray to God by saying, like, dear God, thank you for making me the greatest soccer player ever. I mean, I pretty much am. I mean, except for the 16 goals I allowed yesterday. Like, I know I'm the greatest. It was all the defense's fault, like, right? That would not be the kind of prayer we want to pray. But rather, I think the prayer we'd want to say is, like, God, thanks for, like, the gifts I have. Like, help me continue to, like, see the gifts you want to give me. 
thanks for all the stuff I have in the, wor- in the world and like continue to be with me in all times and places when I'm sad, when I'm angry. Like it's really just about talking with God, right? So all the adults struggle with this too. Kids, if you have a hard time like thinking of how to pray, like just know that all the, a lot of the adults do too, not all of them. I've heard some really like beautiful adult prayers around here. But praying, sometimes we make it out to be way too hard when it really isn't. It's just talking to God. And like I get asked to pray in front of groups a lot and I just try to say a prayer that's like Mike's prayer. Not like some great prayer that that covers all times and places, but just what's on my heart when I'm talking to God in that moment. Should we just go back or should we maybe say a prayer? We should say a prayer, okay. Let's pray. And one of my favorite things is sometimes people are like, okay, everyone has to close their eyes and bow their head, which isn't wrong. That's a way to pray, but it's not the way to pray. You could pray in all sorts of ways, right? You could pray by like looking at the symbols in the church here or like looking at maybe someone you love a whole lot or like, just looking up to, you can, you can do or be however you want when you pray. There isn't a right way. You can look to the sky, right? There is not a right way to pray. So everyone bow their, no, just teasing. Let's pray. Dear God, I am thankful on this day for church and for all the people that are here, for all the people that are joining online right now or maybe later in the week. And I just really appreciate the opportunity to come and worship because Worship is not like the rest of the world and the rest of the week for me. This is different, and it sort of shakes me out of the world and reminds me of what my focus is all about. And so I'm thankful for that, and I'm thankful for this moment with the kids to think about that and be reminded of that. Continue to help us to be pray. Amen. Just do it, right? All right. first reading is from Isaiah, the 49th chapter. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate, prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor, I have answered you. On a day of salvation, I have helped you. I have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people to establish the land, to apportion the desolate heritages, saying to the prisoners, come out to those who are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed along the ways, on all the barren heights shall be their pasture. They shall not hunger or thirst, neither scorch wind nor sun shall strike them down. For he who has pity on them will lead them, and by springs of water will guide them. And I will turn all my mountains into a road, and my highways shall be raised up. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exalt. O earth, break forth, O mountains, into singing, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his suffering ones. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. The word of the Lord. We will read from Habakkuk responsively. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. The 
The second reading is from the first chapter of 1 Peter. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be yours made careful search and inquiry, inquiring about the person or time that the Spirit of Christ within them indicated when it testified in advance to the sufferings destined for Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you in regard to the things that have now been announced to you through those who brought you good news by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Therefore, prepare minds for action. Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, As he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. The word of the Lord. The Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. Let us pray. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. All right. This morning, I want to think about the topic of waiting. We're going to think about waiting, all right? Waiting. See what I did there? (laughs) Who likes to wait? Uh, Nobody. Joe is the only one with I see with a hand up. It was a complete. Joe, you're always, you're, 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 you like waiting too? All right, yeah. I mean, so and, do you guys like waiting? You guys love waiting, don't you? Well, I don't know if you saw, but you're right, George. No, nobody raised their hand for liking to wait. Um, and at Van Kirk, it was the exact same story. Nobody. Well, you know what? Today is your lucky day because I'm going to preach all about waiting. And the first thing I'm going to do is just stand here for a couple minutes and we're going to wait. 
You're all going to wait for me to say something. George is actually speaking the words that everybody's thinking right now out loud, right? <laughs> Nobody likes waiting. Nobody likes waiting. All right. So no one likes waiting. But what, what are you waiting for right now? What kind of things are you waiting for in life? Waiting for George to stop talking. <laughs> yes, Joy. You're waiting for a new car. That's exciting stuff. And you like waiting for that new car, right? No, we hate, do not like, no. Yes, what else are you waiting for, friends? Waiting for Sean to get out of your house. Is that what I heard you say? <laughs> waiting for a house, for, that's a tough wait right now in the world. That's tricky, yeah. That's a really good wait, though, right? You kind of waited to respond to that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. What else are we waiting for? Waiting to see my friends that I haven't seen in two years. Yeah, waiting to see friends. I mean, you've already hit the high point with getting to be with these friends, right? <laughs> right. Waiting to see friends. That's a great one. What else are you waiting for? How has no one said Christmas yet? Right? This is the Christmas season, right? Is it the Christmas season? No. It's the Advent season, right? It's the not Christmas season. It's the Advent season. We are really bad at waiting for things like this. Like here in the Advent season, but really only inside these four walls, because everywhere else it's all full bore Christmas, right? It was Christmas before Thanksgiving. Um, I heard a Christmas song and was complaining to you all on the way to church one Sunday morning, like in the middle of November. But now it's just everywhere. There's Chris, I mean, every store is Christmas to one. I mean, it's almost actually past the Christmas season, really, in the stores. But all the radio stations have Christmas music. Um, Stacy and I have had this argument at our house about Christmas music. And for those who came to our house yesterday, you saw our Christmas trees up, our Christmas decorations are up. And we argue back and forth about Christmas music and how permissible it is in our house and in our like world of things. And um, one of Stacy's arguments is there isn't any Advent music, um, except for the Advent um, choral Eucharist piece we're working on right now. We listen to that around our house. But other than that, it's all Christmas music, and there's no Advent music. So I told Stacy I was going to make a playlist for her of Advent songs. So this is what I came up with, because there are Advent songs out there. Um, Wait by M83. It's sort of a more little-known song, but I, I love that song. Um, I've been waiting for a girl like you, I'm a foreigner. I've been waiting for a girl like you. Um, Hamilton, wait for it. Yeah, that's a good waiting song, right? Um, sticking with musical themes, um, I just can't wait to be king from Lion King. <laughs> Mumford and Sons, I Will Wait, which let me say is arguably the most Advent-themed song ever written. I mean, the, the words are right on with what we think Advent is all about. Um, I Will Wait by Mumford & Sons. Um, if you're a John Mayer fan, Waiting on the World to Change. Another good song, yeah. Clearly not a, uh, not a John Mayer group here, so I'm like, I did not see a whole lot of reaction to that one. Thank you, Adam, thank you. Um, 80s Power Ballads, how about Right Here Waiting by Richard Marks. I will be right here waiting for you. Yeah, right? Although he's much higher than I am. That's why I've got started so far, so far for Stacy. So if you have more Advent songs like that, those are clearly Advent songs. Give them to me. I'm going to make a playlist for her. What do you got, Jacob? Because that's what Advent is all about. And they knew they were writing Advent songs for this sermon. <laughs> you know why? Because we do a lot of waiting in the world, and we don't know how to deal with it, especially we in, like, the Western culture. I just I, I began this sermon by saying, who likes to wait? And how many people raise their hands? All the Joes and Jack. <laughs> but that's it. Like, no one likes to wait. And so we've been writing songs and poetry and pondering and thinking and really trying to ignore the idea of waiting. And we don't. Again, Christmas. We're already full bore in Christmas when it doesn't even happen for 21 days, whatever, 21 days from now, right? We are just not good at waiting. But guess what? Waiting is awesome. Like, we... It is. I'm going to tell you why right now. And so put on your good listening ears. So I'm going to tell you why listening is awesome. You're not going to listen. That's fine, too. You're not the only one. Um, <laughs> just so you all know, Alfie's like, I don't, I'm not listening to this. 
Um, so the church has two times a year where we just dig into, into waiting, into preparing for the thing around our two biggest festivals, right? Christmas, we have this season of Advent where the whole point is not being the thing. The whole point of Advent is waiting for the thing, which is Christmas. But it isn't Christmas. And then we get to our other big festival, Easter. What comes before Easter? 40 days of Lent, which is just waiting and preparing for the thing. It isn't the thing, it's waiting for the thing. Like, how good is that? And how countercultural in our world is that? It's just awesome. So here's why I like prep, preparing for stuff. I, love, I like process. I like preparation. I like the, the whole like, journey from here to the thing. Like when we were at um, our, I, we went to our in-laws, to Stacey's parents' house for, uh, for Thanksgiving. And so we're preparing a Disney trip in, in uh, March. And so Stacey's sister-in-law pulls out this like inch and a half binder with just like papers and documents. I'm not even sure what all was in that thing, but just like so much prep work for Disney. And then, and they've been spending all kinds of time calling each other and messaging each other and just preparing for the journey, right? All this bonding time, all this relationship time, all this like excitement time and anticipation and preparation. And it's just, it's so beautiful. It's so full of excitement and joy, right? And be easy to be like, uh, I'm just going to get stuck in waiting for the thing that happens in March and we've got our countdown timers and I just want to get there and miss the months of beauty. Like, haven't you done this for vacations or prepared for other big events? And like, do you have the tendency to get all wrapped up in the thing while missing the journey? Another example. This one's big for us here at House of Prayer. This is a whole community thing. The food truck came to fruition on Thursday, this past Thursday. We did it. We took it out. We took it down to Franklin Avenue, and for two hours, we served like 150-plus rounds of nachos made to order for our community and gave out tons of hot chocolate, and we just were there in our community. We lived out for our first initial night what we've been dreaming about for years. And when I say years, I mean that. Like, we have sat around Manna or at Sheffield Cafe after Manna or wherever we've gathered, different pieces of our leadership team just, like, being ridiculous and throwing out stupid ideas and then we thought maybe this stupid idea should actually like come to fruition. And we, like last year, wrote a plan for this. And then we asked for $80,000 for it. And then someone thought our plan was so good they gave us $80,000. And then we really got scared because then we had to do something with it. That was terrifying. And so like over the last eight months, we have spent hours meeting together, talking, processing, trying to Listen to voices tell us what we need to be mindful of, what we need to prepare for. We sent people off to go scour Craigslist and Facebook marketplaces for all the food trucks and food trailers they could find as we whittled down what we wanted to do. We had to decide what we were going to cook on this thing or how we were going to use it. Like, where was things going to be free or not free? And we went with free, obviously. And then we, like, figured out what we wanted, and we went through the process of buying the thing. And then we went through the process of all the paperwork of being licensed for nonprofit stuff in Pennsylvania and with the IRS. And then food safety training, and all that business, right? And you could say, like, this is all annoying and a pain in the butt because we just want to get to the place where we serve food. However, I loved it. I loved the meetings. I loved the group dynamics of people with great ideas and new creative ways of doing things and to see their passions. And that. You know why I like all those things? Because that is what God looks like. That is what God looks like when God is at work in the world. And when we don't want to wait and stop and reflect and look for these things, we totally miss God. If we're all about Christmas already, we miss the beauty of the journey to get there. If we're all about our car coming and the car being here in our, we miss the anticipation of the thing and the waiting and the pro. If we're all about Sean getting his new place. We miss the journey of like looking for it and how that can be fun and imagining ourselves in new places and new thoughts and new ideas, like how we'll drive around and what will be nearby down the street. And we miss like all the things God could be doing and introducing us to in new and creative ways. <sighs> I love the waiting. I love the stopping and asking where God is in the journey. My dad used to beat into my head all the time. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And this is, this is God over and over and over again. And it's, it's crazy to me how we Christians can be like, what's the message of Christianity? And we're like, it's about Jesus coming, dying for us, and being raised again, and then we all are saved. And I'm like, that's, 
two chapters in Matthew, but what about the other 25, 26, right? I mean, the story of the Scriptures is not about one small moment where Jesus fixes everything. The story of the Scriptures is about Jesus living a whole life where he's like wrestling to fix things. It's about the journey. So friends, here in Advent, on this day, I encourage you to not get caught up in the thing, whatever it is, whether it's cars, houses, Christmas, friends, what we've all got the thing. Not get lost in the thing, but rather be totally immersed in the now, in the journey, and keep stopping yourself and looking around and listening and looking for where God is now. Because God is in all the nows. Amen. Together, we confess our faith using the words of the Creed in the bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we turn our hearts to prayer. Uh, So we're going to sing for the healing of creation as our prayer litany, and I'll give you instructions for that in just a moment, but I just want to honor those who have uh, raised up their praying already. Um, Pray with Joyce, her prayers for Aunt Mary and for Uncle Dino. Um, Mike's prayers, thankfulness for Pastor Mike, as he has taught me through his sermons, actions, and conversations in different ways to think about life and God. And I want to raise up prayers from the congregation um, for Susan, who prays for Paula and family of Sissy Soban. And also prayers for a clear scan for Brian tomorrow. Amy's prayers for Deborah and families of Barbara and Scotty. 
Diane's prayers for Amy, Carol, Ginger, and Michelle. Jean Marie's prayers for Laverne and Annick as they deal with metatastic cancer. And Quayshon, his prayers for Rhonda and for himself, for peace and for joy. We appreciate everyone offering those prayers up for worship this morning. If there's any others, um, they are known, of course, and I'll see them, but we won't be able to voice them out loud. So the prayer litany for the healing of creation is one that we use around Advent every year with different words for each of the weeks. Um, and so this week, the, the words are for creation. So there's pairs of different aspects of creation in which we'll pray for. And um, your response in between each pairing is to say, sing, God, renew. God, renew. Um, and then at the end of every verse, the refrain is, for the healing of creation, we pray to you, O God. We repeat that then. And I'll give you a prompt for the first one so we know it. Um, so we're going to pray for the healing of creation. Your response is, God, renew. Ben will lead it, but I think a lot of folks know. And if you don't, you'll catch on pretty quickly. So let us pray. Sun and moon, God renew, spinning planet, God renew, star and comet, God renew, things seen and unseen, God renew, cloud and wind, God renew, lightning and thunder. Atmosphere and ozone, flames of fire, the waters of the earth, older cap and glacier, aquifer and river, lake and ocean. The healing of creation, we pray to you, O God. For the healing of creation, we pray to you, O God. For the healing of creation, we pray to you, O God. Desert and forest. Coral reef and coastline, prairie and tundra, wilderness and wetland, mountain and foothill, mesa and meadow, valley and volcano. Blood plain and delta, the trees of the field, fir and cedar, Moabab and Banyan, oak and cypress, for the healing of creation. For the We pray. 
pray to you, O God, herds and flocks, buffalo and lava, goat, sheep and cattle, guinea pigs and honeybees, seed time and harvest, vineyard and orchard, and garden, field and paddy, the face of the earth, human community, in rest and labor, all by your spirit, last time for the healing of creation. The healing of creation. We pray to you, O God, for the healing of creation. We pray to you, O God. All God's people said. Let us pray. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal through Jesus Christ, our pathway and our peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also. Lift up your hearts. We to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us in the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. 
The cry of the poor has become your own cry, and our hunger and thirst for justice are your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. When you gather, do this and remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. When you gather, do this and remember me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say amen. 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 Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, spirit of freedom, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we pray together slowly prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
this bread and drink this cup. Take and eat this bread and drink this cup.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. That's a good one. Dear friends, go forth as awakened people, aware of God working in the darkness and in the light. We see God at work in our world, and that makes all the difference. Go forth as expectant people, conscious of iniquity in our midst, yet welcoming the Lord's grace and justice. Good Lord's new day, believing that Christ has set us free. Go forth as serving people, Aware of the pain that so many bear, yet confident the Lord will bring healing often through you. As, as channels of the Lord's love. For we have heard good news and have been empowered to share it. May Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, deliver you from all harm, and keep you safely in life. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share that peace with each other and the world. Mm -hmm.